Tonight is October the 2nd, 2016. This is for my uh, ham radio operators and builders and anybody that likes high voltage and uh, high power amplifiers. This right here is a uh, an RF amplifier. Any of you guys and possible ladies that watch my uh, videos know that I like to build RF amplifiers and audio amplifiers. Here's what it's running. I can do all this with one hand. It's running a single 3-500Z right here. Uh, grid and plate current. There's a plate choke. This is out of an OART-13. That's a World War II surplus device. <clears throat> same as pretty much same as the BMW 800. The two uh, vacuum capacitors. This is uh, tuning and loading. This one is a um, five to five hundred picofarad. This one's a 2,000 picofarad, so I've got lots of range. Of course, the bypass capacitors down here and the high voltage feed through right over here. Uh, let me move it on around a bit. Got an actual genuine, a very interesting uh, antenna relay right here. Because you don't want to run the uh, RF through these little skinny wires that are oftentimes on uh, relays, you know. You want to run it through something that can actually handle the current. I used a uh, copper strap for all of my uh, connections and then put heat shrink tubing over it. This right here is an interesting uh, coil for those that are not familiar with. It's called a B and W. Barker and Williamson made these back in the 60s and I guess 70s too. This is a model 850A. It'll run um, just about anything, a, a single uh, single 3500Z. I don't even know if they made 3500Zs back then. Maybe they did. Or 4-400s, whatever, 3400Zs, etc. Then they made one slightly different from this. It was made out of just this type of tubing that was a different impedance that you could use like with a 4CX1000. This is the 10 meter coil up here. So. The RF comes in to here and all, all of it goes through here and then it goes through different parts of this depending on where the uh, switch setting is which shorts out the unused terminals. That's what these strap connections are right here. They go over here to this switch that the, uh, what you do uh, to change bands is you short out the coil, short out the positions, a certain amount of the turns that you don't need. And uh, I don't have the original knob for it and everything, but you switch bands like that. And it works really nice. I've had this for quite some time. I've got the other one too, but I haven't, um, I haven't built anything with it. But I've gotten really busy lately building these things and using up my parts. And the same thing in the bag. Got, this is power in for the uh, filament. Uh, this operates this relay. Of course, RF output, a ground connection. I always had a ground connection. Even though it, it's metal on metal, it's, it's good to have a secure large wire ground connection because heaven forbid you get between a device drawing current and the power supply and ground. You, you know, if, if the chassis got separated somehow, don't ask me how because it could, but it only has to happen once to kill you. And RF input. And these are tuning right here for uh, tuning the cathode. Need to plug that little hole right there. That's the only extra hole that I drilled in this whole chassis this time. That's pretty amazing. I usually end up with a couple of uh, mystery holes uh, from things that didn't work out. And the power supply is in here. This is a power supply I've used in uh, many things. The 3 1000 ZR audio amp, the 813 amp. It uses a, uh, a tap transformer, tap secondary transformer. Big choke. I'm running it right now with a capacitor input filter. These right here, these are all 470 microfarad in series on the output. So I got 4,500 volts up to. And then I got another uh, uh, bank of them down here that are 100 microfarads all in series. So I got 10 on the input and uh, 47 on the output. So I got really good filtering. This little relay right here is the TR relay. That's what the initiates and the uh, what you, uh, the um, the high voltage supply over here. Here are where the uh, taps on the secondary of the transformer come to, so I can I can switch it 
and uh, get different secondary voltages. So I can get three this way, or I could take the capacitor off the input and have a choke input filter, and I could have three different ones. So I've, I've got actually uh, available six different voltage selections. But right there, the 2500 with a, with a capacitor input filter gives me like 3400 up here. You'll see in just a minute when I hook it up. And I'm driving it with these two little radios, one or the other. This is a little ICOM 736, and this is a little uh, Tintac Argosy for the uh, for the ham radio operator. So let's put it in and turn it on and, and watch it work into a dummy load. Before I put it in, I wanted to show you this. I thought this was really nice looking. I drilled two holes in the front. If you remember what the front looks like, this it back around here so you can actually see the, the tube lit up back there. I think it's really important to be able to watch the tube because you can tell a lot about what's going on if it's uh, out if the tank circuit's out of resonance. So what I did is I punched the uh, these holes are the exact same size hole as the meter, and then I, I took a uh, a picture frame and got the glass out of it and put it up against it and put some goop on the edges to uh, glue it down and then I had some of this real pretty uh, copper screen that I put there and taped it around with copper tape I just think it looks really nice and uh, you'll see when I turn it on how you can view the tube through here and see what's going on okay let's do a little experiment here that you guys might like uh, this is my uh, impedance bridge, my RX bridge. I've got the lights off so it won't be so glaring. Uh, we can measure R and X. This is a nice little accurate meter that I built 30 something years ago. I've used it all these years. Trust it. What I'm doing right now is I am measuring the input impedance of the amplifier. The input impedance of this guy. You can see the tube is lit but there's no high voltage. And if you remember when you talk, when you see articles on how to adjust the impedance of these little networks, this is a Pi network on the input. I think I showed you there's, there's two little capacitors right in there. And there's no high voltage on there, but we're going to adjust those. There's also an inductor between them, but it's fixed. And it's a recommended value. But what we're going to do here is measure right now the tube at, with just the filaments lit and it nulls out at about 85 ohms and the way you read this is you have to do the it's in minus J you have to do the capacitive reactance equivalent to that and what I end up getting is an input impedance of about 85 minus J20 just a little bit of capacitive reactance it's not perfect 50 ohms but it's not this is not a bad match it works great you know, even if it was 100 ohms, it'd, still, it'd be a 2 to 1, and if we had no reactants. But I don't know what this Z comes out to be, the scalar Z, and I don't really care right now. But what it is, is this squared, it's the square root of this squared, plus this squared. That's what it is. And then the angle is the arctan of X over R. But I don't think we need to do that. We'll just leave it as it is. Okay. Um... Now, let's put high voltage on it and see if it changes. Well, I can do that real time, I believe. Uh, we're not transmitting anything. We're into a dummy load. Whoops, darn. Let me turn it off. Turn the whole radio off. Okay, let's turn it on and see if it changes. All right, it is on. There's our idling plate current, about 150 millils at uh, 3,400 volts. The camera is not completely overwhelmed. Plate voltage, plate current, no grid current. Okay, it did change a little bit, not a lot, but let's see if we can null it again. Okay, we'll start with the R. Do a little bit of the X over here. There you go. It's going down. It did change ever so slightly, but not not much. So there it is. It changed from like 85 ohms to somewhere between 75 and 82. Call that 70. 
5, 78 ohms. And it changed from slightly, uh, some, for, for some slight capacitive reactants to some slight inductive reactants, because now we got plus J. It changed a little bit. It did not change enough to worry about. Well, this is just something I like to know. Because, you know, what you read in articles sometimes are great. But what they tell you and what they really measured may be two different things. Look at that thing glowing in there. It's normal. I know the camera makes it look really dramatic. But it, it's a nice, it's the right color orange. Let's look around at the back. Yeah, it's pretty hot in there, isn't it? We won't put your finger in there right now. You come back without a finger. But I think they're beautiful. Well, anyway, there you go. What it's worth. Oh, yeah, I haven't shown you the power yet. Let's, uh, I need to turn the lights back on and, and, get, and get set up again. Okay, well, for that last experiment, let me show you what I was doing. I was driving, this right here is coming from uh, this signal generator over here. <clears throat> So I was driving it at 14.250 oh megahertz on the RF phone. You can actually hear the receiver. Uh, and I was driving this thing with it at, at uh, 7.5 dBm, you know, a real low level signal. So I wasn't actually driving the amplifier. And uh, that's and then I this was going to the input of the amplifier. That's why I was doing this little RX bridge. I'm sure you could do it with uh, any of the commercial ones too and, and get a similar thing. Okay, now I've got it set up. Let's uh, turn it on. And uh, here's our power on the old bird watt meter. That's uh, 750 watts. It's ever slightly over with uh, 130 mils of grid current and almost 400 mils of uh, plate current. Plate voltage drops from 3,400 and you load to a full load of just a hair below 3,000. Just for grins, let's put our uh, over here into the digital readout. And uh, see what the digital readout says. Let's see, I'll turn the volume up just a little bit so I can hear it. See, it says it's 810 watts. It says CQ very well up there with that, kind of. All this is into a dummy load. Well, anyway, there it is. I have been on the air with it. I've had, had a number of uh, QSOs with it and uh, it's working great. I'm really, really pleased with it. I'm really amazed with that 3500Z. That's a pretty powerful little tube. So you can see I get 800 watts out of one. And that's not overdriving it. That's driving it to the screaming max. Well, not really. You can run as much as 3500 volts on it. Well, it says the absolute max is 4000, but 3500 isn't outrageous. So, uh, you can push it all the way up, I believe, according to the IMAC data sheets, up to about right, right around 900 watts. So it can actually push slightly higher. See, there's those uh, two holes I was talking about there. There's glass right there. And then the screen is behind that. Not that that's protecting me from any RF, but it just, I thought it looked really nice. And then you can always glance in there and you, you don't want to see that thing, you know, about to pop out of the socket. It's so hot. Well, there it is right there and all the setup and this little, uh, Jewel right here, this little B&W uh, grid dip meter is just the most marvelous little grid dip meter I've ever had. Here's my dummy load over there. And that's about it. So, uh, hope you enjoy. Keep building and stay safe. Thanks for watching.